Welcome, today we're going to talk about different data types inside of ARM 3D and these apply to almost any game engine and program language in the world. So to start off let's talk about the colors and what they correspond to. So first of all we have the float. Now you should know what a float is, it essentially means any number under the sun whether it be 1.1 or 5 or 20 million, that, that's all, that's, they're all floats because they're all numbers. So a flow is a gray, it has a gray socket. So if you have a node with a gray uh, input or output socket, you know that that is expecting a float value. For example, when you have the 3D uh, coordinates in 3D space, they're called vectors. And if you separate out those vector bunches into their own separate numbers, as in their own separate floats, then you get access to that gray socket. And that is when you can add, for example, a random float value, we can select the minimum and maximum and that will generate a random float number every single, well depending on your action, in this case it's on update so it's every single frame is going to generate a random uh, float number which is going to be used as a coordinate of that specific axis. Similarly we have integers, now an integer is the exact same thing as a float except they don't uh, function with decimals, so you can only have full numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You can't have numbers like 1.1. That is a float, not an integer. So integers are the exact same thing except without decimals. They're characterized by a green socket. Now pay attention to that because later on I'm going to show you a different green socket with a different shade, so it's rather important to not get them confused. We also have uh, the ability to ask questions, for example uh, a boolean is a way to figure out a yes or no answer and if we use this example of a mobile browser as an is this a mobile browser that this app is running on right now and it's going to send out a yes or a no answer and then you can add functions based on those answers or not, you can just leave them blank if you want. But it asks yes or no questions and based on that you can make very important uh, decisions. It's very easy to figure out what is a float because it's got a distinct pink socket and uh, well it's just very distinctive. <laughs> but uh, yet another super important one is characterized by a blue socket and this is a string and that is any word or English letter in, in the world or not just English mind you but any letter or word that you could want that is a string and you can use that for example in the last video where we showed the print node and you can put English letters in that and it will print it on the console that is a string the name of the objects they're all strings you can get the name of the object at runtime that is a string data that you're using and finally the last one is the dynamic one that is anything all of the above so whether it be a flow an integer a boolean or a string a dynamic can take any of that and that is characterized with a different shade of green on the on the node side. so not to get confused with the integer when it comes to integrating these properties inside of Iron 3D, we have a possibility of using the Armory properties. So here you can go and add in a property, whether it be a string, an integer, a float, or a boolean. Let's, for example, use a float. We can rename this value to be whatever we want. For example, in our case, value. The property is going to be value, and the number is going to be 5. And so we can re reference this inside of our node tree by getting the uh, property and setting the property. These are two nodes that you can use to change that variable. So let's eye drop the object that this variable is hosted on and let's uh, reference which variable we want to talk about. In our case the variable is called value and it's a float with a value of 5. So we can add an on start node which is the on init which happens every time as soon as the game starts and we can set a float value to define what the property's value is going to be because value has a value of 5 right now and uh, by using this node tree we're actually going to set it to 1 and now we can get that value and print it to the console so we should be able to see 1 appear on the console because we just modified it with these uh, node, with that node tree above and these two nodes underneath actually set it on the console, it actually prints the value on the console so even though we set it to be 5 on the editor here in ARM 3D it will actually show up as 1 because that's the three nodes up there it sets the value to 1 and then it prints it on the console that's just a basic example of how to use values inside of uh, ARM 3D and you can also use these as uh, a player's um, movement speed, jump speed, uh, the, something to do with bullets or 
if you have like a, a limited mag so limited bullets you can use a, a variable for that all these different situations you'd probably want to use this method using properties and as you can see it shows one in the console but there is however a second method and this method is less desirable because it's more limited the second method is practically the same thing but it's a little bit different so let's go ahead and start building this out so let's grab a float node because that's what we used last time if not you can use the integer a boolean or a string node whatever you want and we can go over here to the tree variable section we can create a new variable just like we did before so let's call this your value for example and now we've created a new variable node so this is going to be the same thing we can add a variable value to this you can see this colored node the the blue colored node is become essentially uh, the caller of which variable we want to talk to and the value we still have to input one so let's go ahead and grab another float node uh, but first let's grab an uninitialized node so we actually need to plug that in to have a starter action and then let's add a value for example uh, one and we can plug that into the value so now the variable called your value has a float of one uh, a float value of one and we can set this to be called uh, set variable to one now what we can do is we can also print this every single frame so let's grab an on update node and this on update node is going to be connected to the add uh, to the variable we're going to get the variables value so let's go ahead and add that node and add it to the string of the print so it's going to print that uh, as the text in the console and as you can see every single frame it's going to come up with one 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 because that's exactly what we inputted into the node tree and so you can see it's the exact same thing as the previous method except this time if we add a node tree a second node tree to the same object we won't be able to interact with that node uh, tree variable because the tree variables only function within the node tree itself so if we have multiple node trees on our object it's stored within the node tree not within the object unlike the previous method which stores the variable within the specific object in the 3d scene and this is very useful uh, for some situations, uh, that first example, but this second method is also very important because node trees aren't object specific, you can have the same node tree with any sort of object. And so having a variable within a specific node tree instead of an object means even if that object is destroyed, the variable will still remain and that is very very powerful if uh, you, you know you need, a, you need your object to retain information even though the mesh disappears. And so that is just a second method that you should be aware of. Uh, so be careful which what, which method you decide to use based on your situation. That's it for us. Thank you very much for watching to the end. If you enjoyed this and learned something, then maybe you can participate in the next video. For example, if you have a blend file, whether you've created a new mechanic, you can send me the blend file and I'll talk about it on a video just like this. Or you, if you have a video yourself, then you can email me for permission to upload to this channel and we can uh, grow the Army 3D community together. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again someday.